Daniel 9.27 says, That leader will make a firm agreement with many people for seven years. He will stop the offerings and sacrifices after three and a half years. A destroyer will do blasphemous things until the ordered end comes to the destroyed city. His armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. Then they will set up the abomination that causes desolation. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, when you see the abomination that causes desolation, standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, so let's put all of these verses together to get a picture of what this abomination will actually be. It will take place at three and a half years into the final seven years. It will involve daily sacrifice and offering being stopped. It will happen in a temple fortress that was desecrated by armed forces. It will involve this person who strengthened his promise or covenant standing in the holy place where he does not belong. And it will be 1290 days before a significant date. I believe this prophecy has been fulfilled in two stages. The first part was fulfilled in April and May of 2002 when Pal Palestinian armed forces rose up and desecrated the temple fortress and abolished the daily sacrifice. Daily communion took place at the Church of the Nativity until the Palestinians took over the building, so what was taking place daily was stopped on that day. Now, eleven years later, the abomination that causes desolation has taken place. We know that this is the holy place that Jesus was talking about because it is a temple fortress that was desecrated and it is referred to as the holy place. Here are some quotes from different articles on the internet from 2002. In Christian tradition, the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem marks the place where Mary gave birth to Jesus. It is one of the oldest continuously operating churches in the world. First-time visitors are sometimes startled, even disappointed, by its fortress-like appearance, which results from a 12th century A.D. Crusader reconstruction to make it more defensible. Defying its status as one of Christendom's holiest shrines, it seems dilapidated and battered, not at all beautiful. Still, for a building that has survived destruction by the Persians in 614, a mad caliph in 1009, earthquake in 1834, Fire in 1869 and Israeli army siege in 2002 against suspected Palestinian militants who had taken refuge there, its dignity remains intact. The forbidding fortress-like church in the center of the modern city of Bethlehem facing Manger Square is one of the oldest churches in the world. Entering the church that marks the site of Christ's birthplace means having to stoop low. The only doorway in the fortress-like front wall is just 1.2 meters high. Needless to say, the seizure of the 1,677-year-old church by 250 guerrillas affiliated with Islamic terrorist factions has hardly roused the armies of Christendom. Crusades, Christian soldiering, and all that went out in the last millennium. It's a shock to realize that this desecration of the ancient church built over what's believed to be the birthplace of Jesus Christ has brought down neither Christian wrath nor international pressure on the desecrators to lay down their arms and leave. Palestinians celebrate the Church of the Nativity win. Israel notes that they desecrated the site. UNESCO turns the same church over to Palestinians that PLO desecrated during Intifada. While Muslims have responded with deadly outrage to the now retracted report by Newsweek of alleged Quran desecration by U.S. interrogators, there was little outcry three years ago when Islamic terrorists holed up in Bethlehem's Church of the Nativity reportedly used the Bible as toilet paper. The Israeli Prime Minister's office said at that time, The world needs to remember that the Church of the Nativity, which is sacred to Christianity, has been desecrated in the past by Palestinian terrorists. The Church of the Nativity in the heart of Bethlehem marks one of Christianity's most sacred sites, the birthplace of Christ. Situated on Manger Square, 8 kilometers from Jerusalem, the church is built over a grotto where the Virgin Mary is said to have given birth to Jesus.
the church's large fortress-like exterior stands as a testament to its turbulent history for centuries it was one of the most fought over holy places it was seized and defended by a, a succession of armies including muslim and crusader forces the church of the nativity in bethlehem is a major holy site as it marks the traditional place of christ's birth it is also one of the oldest surviving christian churches the holy site known as the grotto that the church of the nativity sits atop is today associated with the cave in which the birthplace of jesus of nazareth occurred no wonder mr sharon told the israeli par parliament he would expect the international community to demand that the terrorists lay down their arms and leave the holy place one of christianity's most holy places the site's focal point is the grotto of the nativity a rectangular cavern beneath the church that has been considered the site of christ's birth since at least the second century a fourteen-pointed silver star set into the marble floor marks the precise spot where Jesus is said to have been born. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, when you see the abomination that causes desolation, standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. We have just witnessed a prophecy from 2,500 years ago, fulfilled. His armed forces will rise up to desecrate the temple fortress and will abolish the daily sacrifice. Then they will set up the abomination that causes desolation. Definition of then. A. Soon after that, next in order of time. B. Following, next after, in order of position, narration, or enumeration. Amid high security, Obama toured the church with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. They stopped at the grotto of the Nativity, which is said to stand where Jesus was born. About 20 children, waving U.S. and Palestinian flags, greeted Obama in a courtyard outside the sanctuary. Notice that Jesus says, when you see standing in the holy place. Obama did not kneel down at the grotto. Matthew 2.11 says, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. This is the appropriate response, kneeling before the king. Obama did not kneel, he just stood there, as Jesus prophesied that he would. One day he will bow his knee. This abomination that we have all just witnessed will cause the desolation to take place. The abomination causes the desolation. Obama is an abomination to the Lord. Desolation means a state of complete destruction, devastation, and ruin. While he was in Israel, the president said in Hebrew, So long as there is a United States, you are not alone. So, if there is no United States, Israel stands alone. In chess, you need to knock out the queen to get to the king. Revelation 18, 7 and 8 says, In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day, her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. During his speech, U.S. President Barack Obama said, Israel is the most powerful country in the region and has the unshakable support of the strongest nation in the world. Now, after studying each word in the original language, this is a possible interpretation for this verse. And he shall strengthen the covenant, pledge, or agreement with many for one week. And in the middle of the week he shall cause the thank offering and the tribute to stop or be held back from. And at the wing of the detestable abomination he shall cause horror and desolation, even until the end or completion, and that determined shall be poured out or melted upon the desolated. Obama made a covenant on January 20th or 21st in 2009 with the American people on the seventh day of the Gentile Feast of Tabernacles, which would be the 21st day of the Gentile New Year, as well as with the world, to be the leader of the greatest and most powerful nation on the earth. On October 9th, 2009, that covenant was strengthened when Mr. Obama was chosen to be the Nobel Peace Prize winner on the seventh day of the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles. This is the only day of the year when the Israelites would cry out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and look for their Messiah, and wave palm branches. On this day, Obama was chosen as the peacemaker of the world. 1260 days later, Obama stood in the holy place, the same place that armed forces had desecrated on April 2, 2002, 
the temple fortress. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are part of the third temple, his body. He no longer dwells in a tabernacle built by human hands. This is why the church of the nativity is the holy place and not the temple mount. The third temple made his first appearance on earth in Bethlehem where the church was built. Obama went there to make a statement that he was declaring himself to be God. This is why 322 is such an important number to the Illuminati. They knew that on March 22nd the Antichrist would go to the holy place to declare himself as God before the Most High. He was making a statement to God and to the world, but the world did not notice. The satanic Illuminati and elite did. March 22, 2013 was also supposed to be the date when Obamacare went into effect, which has provisions within it for the mark of the beast chip to be inserted into Americans. It was delayed in fulfillment of the prophecies, which will be discussed in the next few chapters of this book. Daniel 12.11 says that from the time that the daily is stopped or put aside, there will be 1290 days. This word daily is tamid, and it simply means daily or continual, something that happens every day. Daniel 9.27 tells us that the sacrifice and offering will be stopped. Every day people line up at the Church of the Nativity to bow down at the grotto and offer thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for coming to earth to be a sacrifice for their sins and to give them eternal life. This is a sacrifice of praise and offering of thanksgiving being offered to the Lord. On March 22, 2013, this daily sacrifice of praise and offering of thanksgiving was stopped when Mr. Obama came to the grotto and did not offer thanks to Jesus for what he has done. Rather, Mr. Obama went there to proclaim to God that the world is now looking to him as the peacemaker and to defy the Lord Jesus Christ. On March 22, 2013, no offering of thanksgiving or sacrifice of praise was made to the Lord from this spot. This happened exactly 1260 days after Mr. Obama was chosen as the Nobel Peace Prize winner on the seventh day of Tabernacles. Since Mr. Obama had not done anything up to that point to usher in peace, it must be assumed that the award was being given to him in the hope that he would become the peacemaker for the world.